In the shadows of history, there exist tales that captivate our imagination. Today, we delve deep into the life and demise of Kawashima Yoshiko, a woman shrouded in mystery and intrigue. From her enigmatic upbringing to her controversial involvement in espionage, her story unfolds like a dark labyrinth, leading to an execution that left many questions unanswered. In the opulent halls of her noble family, Kawashima Yoshiko's early years were bathed in privilege and prestige. Born in 1907 to a distinguished lineage, she was destined for a life of luxury and comfort. However, fate had different plans in store for the young heiress. She was adopted at the age of eight by Naniwa Kawashima, who met her father and operated Japanese spy networks in China. Yoshiko Kawashima was her Japanese name when she was schooled there. At the tender age of 13, Yoshiko's life took an unexpected turn as she was sent away from her familiar surroundings to the distant land of Manchuria. This fateful decision would shape the course of her life in ways she could never have anticipated. Separated from her family and thrust into the imperial court of Manchuria, Yoshiko found herself navigating a world of intrigue and political maneuvering. It was within this backdrop that Yoshiko's enigmatic journey truly began. Her adoptive father raped her at the age of 17 and later abused her. As Yoshiko grew older, her beauty and charisma became renowned, captivating the hearts of both men and women alike, but she would often write about her boyish habits saying I was born with what the doctors call a tendency toward the third sex, and so I cannot pursue an ordinary woman's goals in life. Since I was young I've been dying to do the things that boys do. My impossible dream is to work hard like a man for China, for Asia. Even after her real father's death, she was not readmitted to her school because of comments made earlier in her life that she had boyish habits despite having a feminine appearance. She exclusively used the male version of Japanese language, Yoshiko stated on November 22, 1925, that she had decided to cease being a woman forever. She had dressed in a kimono with a traditional feminine hairstyle and taken a shot among blossoming cosmos earlier that day to celebrate my farewell to life as a woman. Yoshiko went to a barbershop that evening and got all her hair chopped off, adopting a crew cut and dressing in men's attire from then on. The very nature of her survival also led to her execution. Five days later, a photo of her transformation appeared in the Asahi Shimbun under the headline, Kawashima Yoshiko's beautiful black hair completely cut off because of unfounded rumors, makes firm decision to become a man touching secret tale of her shooting herself. Her persona is wrapped in apocryphal stories, the truth will never be known. She wore men's attire for the rest of her life. Espionage career, at the age of 20, her brother and adoptive father arranged for her marriage to Ganjurjab in Port Arthur, also known as Ryajan, the son of Inner Mongolian Army General Babajab, the marriage ended in divorce after just three years, and she fled Mongolia, first traveling to China's bustling coastal cities then living a bohemian lifestyle in Tokyo for several years with a series of affluent lovers, both men and women. Kawashima relocated to Shanghai's foreign concession. Throughout the 1930s, she developed friendships with a number of Japanese and Chinese officials. She was an attractive, cunning, and well-connected socialite living it up in Shanghai's cocktail clubs. She persuaded Chinese officials into revealing information that the Japanese might utilize. Yoshiko met Ryukichi Tanaka, a Japanese military attaché and intelligence officer who used her relationships with the Manchu and Mongol nobles to develop his network. She took part in a conspiracy in 1932 to spark a violent backlash against the Japanese in Shanghai, which opened the door for aggressive Japanese involvement. The strategy was planned by her new lover Tanaka, an officer in the Guangdong Army. She was residing in Shanghai with Tanaka at the time of the Shanghai incident in 1932. Yoshiko met Ryukichi Tanaka, a Japanese military attaché and intelligence officer who used her relationships with the Manchu and Mongol nobles to develop his network. She took part in a conspiracy in 1932 to spark a violent backlash against the Japanese in Shanghai, which opened the door for aggressive Japanese involvement. The strategy was planned by her new lover Tanaka, an officer in the Guangdong Army. She was residing in Shanghai with Tanaka at the time of the Shanghai incident in 1932. Kawashima continued to work as a spy for Major General Kenji Doihara after Tanaka was repatriated to Japan. She conducted secretive missions in Manchuria, sometimes in disguise. Most males she met thought she was extremely gorgeous and dominant, she may have disguised as a man to lead her paramilitary organization, or she could have been transgender. 
She may have done this to impress the men, or she may have done it to blend in with the tight-knit guerrilla groups without drawing too much notice. Kawashima continued to play numerous roles when Puyi became emperor of Manchukuo, including becoming the mistress of Hayotada, Puyi's main military advisor. Tanaka put his mistress on the payroll of the Japanese intelligence service and sent her to an English language school because he believed that it would help her later on in espionage. Tanaka wanted to maintain his mistress in high style. Tanaka assigned Yoshiko Kawashima to work after he received the order to cause commotion in Shanghai in the fall of 1931 in order to draw attention away from the Japanese occupation of Manchuria. Tanaka gave her money and instructions, telling her to employ a large number of Chinese thugs to rob people of their possessions and cause widespread mayhem as Japanese naval boats dropped out marine detachments that occupied different parts of the city. During the pacification of Manchukuo, she established an autonomous counterinsurgency cavalry force of 3,000 to 5,000 former bandits to hunt down anti-Japanese guerrilla organizations, and was praised in Japanese publications as the Joan of Arc of Manchukuo. Yoshiko Kawashima began to be known as Commander Jean Binhui. The fact that she was head of her army made her a sensation in Japanese headlines. According to reports, she cheered as the Japanese Air Force attacked Shanghai and toured the ruined city with Japanese officials, cheerfully trampling over the remains of murdered women and children. She persuaded Manchu Emperor Pui, February 7, 1906 to October 17, 1967, to return to Manchuria in March 1932 and act as the Japanese protectorate of Manchukuo's figurehead. She marketed herself to the Manchurian public by appearing on radio, creating recordings, and distributing incredible stories about her experiences to the press. The Japanese media nicknamed her the Joan of Arc of Manchukuo. Her celebrity status diminished her worth to the Japanese intelligence network. In 1933, she formed a paramilitary squad to combat anti-Japanese rebels in Manchukuo, but the Japanese declined to cooperate. She fell out of favor with the Japanese as she became increasingly critical of their administration of Manchukuo, and her public appearances were limited. But with power comes responsibility. Yoshiko's journey took a dark turn when her secrets threatened to reveal themselves. Betrayal and deception awaited her around every corner, sending her down a perilous path from which she would never return. Her popularity caused problems for the Guangdong army because her utility as an intelligence asset had long since passed, and her value as a propaganda symbol was undermined by her increasingly critical tone against the Japanese military's exploitative policies in Manchukuo as a base of operations against China in the Second Sino-Japanese War, and she gradually faded from public view. As Yoshiko descended deeper into the realm of espionage, the perilous nature of her journey became clear. The secrets that had given her power and influence threatened to unravel the frail strands that held her together. Trust became a luxury she couldn't afford as betrayals lurked around every corner. The Legacy of Kawashima Yoshiko In the end, Kawashima is undoubtedly most recognized for her flamboyant personal style and frequent gender bending, donning masculine attire in public, ranging from tuxedos to military uniforms to the dress of a male Chinese scholar. Shofu Morimatsu, a Japanese writer residing in China, wrote a novel about her called The Beauty in Men's Clothing, which was released in 1933. In Shanghai nightclubs, she would occasionally wear men's outfits and dance with women. This behavioral pattern began in her youth, when she was still in Japan, when she shaved her head after her adoptive father ended her connection with her young boyfriend, Toru Yamaga, a Japanese military officer in training. Capture, Trial and Execution the path she had chosen was unsafe and one mistaken step might spell disaster. At some time, the Japanese officers who had used her agreed that she should to be neutralized in some way, orders to murder her were given throughout the years, but no one wanted to carry them out, so she was typically whisked away somewhere to keep her out of harm's way, with orders to remain out of trouble, despite the fact that she frequently found it anyhow. When the war ended, she found herself back in China, and she refused to go to Japan. After the end of the war, on November 11, 1945, a news agency reported that a long sought for beauty in male costume was arrested in Beijing by counterintelligence officers. She was held at Hebei Model Prison. The Hebei Supreme Court addressed Kawashima as Chuan Da Fanzi, the Chinese pronunciation of her Japanese name. When her trial began a month later, Kawashima identified herself as Jean Bihue which finally became the name used by court authorities. 
However, in order to deflect her treason allegation, her attorneys increasingly attempted to highlight a Japanese or Manchu flag identity. The court denied the defense's request that she be prosecuted as a war criminal rather than a domestic traitor, citing just Sanguinis and Kawashima's refusal to legally renounce her citizenship through China's Department of Civil Affairs. Charged with treason as a Hanjian on October 20, 1947, she was killed on March 25, 1948 by a bullet fired into the back of her skull, and her body was then shown in public. Her final deed was to compose a letter to her father. Her desire for a private execution was denied, her body was displayed in public and witnessed by hundreds of Chinese. A Japanese priest gathered her body to be burned. Her body was returned to her adoptive family and buried at the Shrinji Temple in Matsumoto, Nagano Prefecture, Japan. The life of Kawashima Yoshiko, a captivating enigma, came to an end that day. But her story continues to haunt the annals of history, leaving us with questions unanswered. What drove her to such depths of darkness? What secrets died with her on that executioner's block? There was some belief that her death was staged with the shooting of a blank and that she was secretly ushered off to Japan to live out the rest of her days quietly and far from the public eye, although Birnbaum is skeptical of such stories. Subscribe to stay updated on more intriguing mysteries, and don't forget to share and like.